In a world where every smile hides a 1,000 thoughts and each handshake holds more than just a greeting, the true measure of a person often remains unseen. Today, we delve into the subtle dynamics of trust and deception, navigating through the complexities of human relationships with a stoic lens. The Stoics taught us that while we may not control the actions of others, our reaction and understanding can shape the very fabric of our social bonds. Join me as we explore the unseen forces at play in everyday interactions, uncovering the wisdom that can help us lead not just successful, but meaningful lives. Stay tuned as we dissect these nuances, ensuring that by the end, you'll walk away better equipped to face the world, not just with caution, but with enlightened discernment. If you appreciate what we're doing here, a simple free favor I'll ask from you is to hit the subscribe button. Also, make sure you don't skip any part of the video to fully grasp the essential insights and stories we're about to share. Let's start. Number one, the manipulative friend. This is someone who at first glance seems to understand you better than anyone else. They nod at all the right moments and their empathetic smiles seem tailor-made just for you. But as time marches on, a disturbing pattern emerges. You begin to notice that their understanding isn't fueled by genuine care, but rather it's a strategic play, using your vulnerabilities for their personal gain. They are like the chess players of social interactions, each move calculated not to help you, but to advance their position. In your moments of sharing and vulnerability, they're not just listening, they're collecting information. This data isn't stored away to support you. Instead, it's often weaponized, used to push you towards decisions and actions that serve their interests, not yours. Their guise of care is just that, a disguise. And under this mask is not the ally you thought you had, but a strategist who views relationships as tools to be used rather than bonds to be cherished. Now, Stoicism teaches us to seek clarity over comfort, truth over pleasant illusions. Marcus Aurelius advised us to be wary of the impressionable nature of our own minds and the intentions of those around us. He would likely counsel us to observe not just what friends say, but what they do, their actions, how they discuss other friends when they're not around, how they handle your secrets, and how they respect your boundaries are the true indicators of their character. So how do you deal with a manipulative friend? Start by setting firm, clear boundaries. Share selectively. Understanding that not every internal thought needs external validation, especially from someone whose motivations are questionable. Slowly distance yourself from their influence and invest more in relationships that bring positivity and growth. Real friends enhance your life and inspire you to expand rather than contract. They add layers to your existence through support and genuine care, not subtract from it through manipulation and deceit. Number two, the constant critic. This person seems to have made it their mission to find fault in everything around them. Every project you undertake, every idea you propose, every aspect of your personality might never seem good enough for them. Their feedback, often lacking the warmth of constructive criticism, feels more like relentless judgment, chipping away at your confidence and self-esteem with each comment. The constant critic often operates under the guise of just being honest or helping you improve. But there's a fine line between helpful criticism and discouraging nitpicking. Their relentless critiques can create a toxic environment where instead of growing, you find yourself guarding every action, every word for fear of criticism. This can stifle creativity and initiative, making you doubt your abilities and value. Marcus Aurelius once said, reject your sense of injury and the injury itself disappears. This powerful stoic reminder teaches us not to internalize the harsh words or negative perceptions of others. Stoicism invites us to consider the source of criticism 
and to reflect on whether there is truth and value in it. If there is something to be learned, use it to your advantage. If not, let it roll off you like water off a duck's back. To deal with a constant critic, it's essential to maintain perspective. Understand that their criticism says more about their own worldviews, insecurities or personal frustrations than it does about your capabilities or worth. Construct boundaries to protect your mental space. You can listen, assess, and then choose whether to accept or discard their words. Engage with them from a place of strength, acknowledging the feedback without allowing it to diminish your sense of self-worth. In Stoic practice, we learn to focus on our own actions and reactions, which are within our control, rather than attempting to control the opinions or behavior of others, which are not. By applying this principle, you can preserve your inner peace and continue your journey of personal growth, even in the face of constant criticism. Number three, the superficially friendly. At first glance, they seem like the most personable individuals you could meet. With a wide smile, they'll ask about your day and make all the right noises that suggest they care. But as you soon might discover, their warmth has little depth resembling more a shallow puddle than a welcoming ocean. These individuals are the social butterflies, gracefully moving from one group to another, never really settling long enough to form deep, meaningful connections. In the world of these superficially friendly people, interactions are often a series of pleasant exchanges that skim the surface of politeness, but never dive into the essence of true friendship. They might be present at every party and appear in all your social circles, but when the chips are down, their presence is often as fleeting as their commitment. True friendship, as we know, isn't just about sharing laughs in the sunlight. It's about standing together in the storm, something these individuals may find too daunting. Stoicism teaches us the importance of genuine relationships and the value of a small circle of close friends over a wide network of acquaintances. Seneca emphasized the quality of friendships rather than quantity. He advocated for relationships where mutual respect and sincerity prevail, guiding us to seek friends who mirror our own values and who provide a stable, reliable presence in our lives. To navigate the realm of the superficially friendly, it's crucial to recognize the signs early. Enjoy their company, if you must, in those light-hearted moments that require nothing more than casual interaction. However, invest your emotional energy wisely. Reserve the depths of your trust and the details of your vulnerabilities for those who have proven themselves in times of both joy and adversity. Cultivating discernment in your social interactions isn't just wise. It's necessary to protect your emotional well-being and ensure that your circle remains authentic. Number four, the inattentive listener. You know the type. They nod in agreement and might even throw in a vague, uh-huh. But you can tell they're not really with you. They're physically present, yes, but mentally they've checked out to some distant place, far from the conversation at hand. It's like talking to a wall that occasionally nods. These interactions can be incredibly frustrating because they lack the fundamental essence of communication, genuine exchange and understanding. Relationships, be they personal or professional, thrive on mutual understanding and active engagement. When someone consistently fails to pay attention, it sends a clear message. What you're saying isn't important to them. This behavior not only stifles the flow of ideas, but also erodes the emotional connection that true listening can forge. Effective communication is a two-way street, and when it becomes one-sided, the relationship suffers. The stoic practice of present-mindedness teaches us to fully engage with the task at hand. For stoics like Marcus Aurelius, listening attentively is not just a courtesy, it's a duty. It's about respecting the person speaking to you by giving them your full attention, reflecting the stoic belief in the importance of every human interaction. If you find yourself frequently on the other end of an inattentive listener, 
there are a few stoic strategies you might employ. First, ensure your own communication is clear and engaging. Sometimes, simply asking direct questions can snap the listener out of their reverie and bring them back to the moment. If that doesn't work, a gentle call-out might be necessary. Let them know you've noticed their distraction and invite them back into the conversation. However, if the pattern persists, it might be worth considering the value this person adds to your life. Are they giving you the respect and attention you deserve? If not, it may be time to redirect your energy towards relationships where mutual engagement and respect are given freely. Number five, the empathy lacking individual. This type of person can be particularly challenging to deal with because they seem almost blind to the emotional landscapes of others. They navigate through life focused solely on their own needs and goals, often at the expense of those around them. Their conversations may center overwhelmingly on their achievements, their problems and their perspectives, with little regard for anyone else's. In interactions with an empathy-lacking individual, you might find that your feelings and experiences are consistently dismissed or outright ignored. This isn't just about a lack of emotional intelligence, it's a fundamental disconnect in recognizing and valuing the humanity in others. Such individuals often leave a trail of bruised relationships behind them, puzzled as to why their interactions are fraught with conflicts and misunderstandings. Stoicism offers a profound remedy to this mindset. It teaches us the importance of looking beyond ourselves and understanding that the human experience is interconnected. Stoics like Epictetus emphasized the role of empathy in human ethics. He taught that we should listen and respond to others with kindness and understanding, recognizing that we are all part of a larger community, each with our own struggles and triumphs. If you find yourself dealing with someone who lacks empathy, Stoicism advises not to meet their indifference with anger or resentment. Instead, see this as an opportunity to practice patience and to lead by example. Show them empathy, not because they necessarily deserve it, but because it's the virtuous thing to do. However, it's also important to set boundaries. Protecting your emotional well-being is crucial, and sometimes that means limiting your exposure to those who drain it. Engaging with an empathy-lacking individual requires a balance of compassion and self-preservation. While you can attempt to model empathetic behavior, you must also recognize when to step back and not allow their self-centeredness to impact your peace. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius pointed out, what we do now echoes in eternity. Let your actions reflect your integrity and compassion even in the face of apathy. This is not just about changing them, it's about holding true to your values, regardless of how others choose to act. Number six, the constant irritator. This person seems to have mastered the art of irritation. With their knack for poking and prodding, they know exactly how to get under your skin, whether it's through subtle digs, backhanded compliments, or slight provocations. They engage in a sort of emotional chess game, their goal to unsettle you, to knock you off balance for their amusement or advantage. The constant irritator thrives on the reaction they can elicit from you. Each annoyed glance, each sigh of frustration is a win for them, a testament to their ability to manipulate the emotional currents around them. This can be incredibly draining as it feels you must constantly guard against their next move, always bracing for the small yet persistent annoyances they create. However, here is where the Stoic teachings can become your stronghold. Stoicism tells us that external events and people's actions don't upset us. Rather, it's our judgments about them that do. Marcus Aurelius wrote, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This wisdom is particularly applicable when dealing with the constant irritator. By adjusting your perceptions, by deciding that their actions will not dictate your emotional state, 
you empower yourself. You take control back from the irritator and place it firmly within yourself. Practicing this stoic detachment involves recognizing the intent behind their irritations. Once you see that their behavior is designed to unbalance you, you can choose to not let it affect you. Imagine their words and actions losing power, fading into the background noise of your life. It's not about ignoring them or pretending the irritation doesn't exist, but rather about changing your response to it. You can acknowledge their attempt to unsettle you without granting them the victory of seeing you perturbed. Engaging with a constant irritator thus becomes less about confronting each irritation and more about maintaining your inner peace. This is the ultimate demonstration of strength. Not that you never feel irritated, but that you can move beyond it, preserving your tranquility amidst the storm they try to stir. Number 7. The Eternal Victim This individual seems to live in a perpetual state of crisis. No matter the day, the season or the circumstance, something is always going terribly wrong for them. But what's particularly challenging about the Eternal Victim is not just the frequency of their misfortunes, it's their apparent unwillingness to do anything about them. They seem to thrive on the sympathy and attention their woes attract, using their endless stream of problems as a tool to draw others in and keep them close. The eternal victim's tales of woe can be emotionally draining. You might find yourself constantly pulled into their dramas, spending energy and time trying to help solve problems that mysteriously never seem to get resolved. Their dependency on your support might feel rewarding at first, as if your presence truly matters. However, it often leads to a one-sided relationship, where your efforts are taken for granted and your own needs and issues are sidelined or ignored. Stoicism offers a powerful framework for dealing with the eternal victim. Stoics like Epictetus taught that we should concern ourselves with things within our control and accept those that are not. When interacting with an eternal victim, it's crucial to recognize the limits of your influence. You can offer support and guidance, but you cannot change their situation. Only they can do that. The Stoics would advise us to practice empathy, but also detachment. Empathize with their pain, but detach from the notion that you are responsible for fixing their life. It's also wise to set boundaries with the eternal victim. If their chaos begins to encroach on your peace, it may be time to reassess how much of your time and emotional energy you can afford to give. Helping them doesn't mean getting swept up in their endless cycle of crises. Instead, encourage them to take action and seek solutions rather than merely consoling them. This approach not only protects your well-being, but also pushes them toward the kind of self-reliance and accountability that Stoicism values. Remember, while compassion is a virtue, it must not come at the cost of your own stability and happiness. The Stoics believed in the importance of inner peace and equanimity, and maintaining these in the face of another's perpetual chaos is both a challenge and a practice in Stoic philosophy. In doing so, you honor not only your mental and emotional health, but also foster a more balanced and healthy relationship with the eternal victim. Number 8. The Two-Faced Individual This person masters the art of duplicity, being charming and friendly to your face, but turning to slander the moment your back is turned. Their skill in wearing different masks for different audiences is disconcerting. They can make you feel like a confidant one moment and the next you might overhear them undermining you to others. It's a bewildering and hurtful experience to realize that someone you thought was a friend could so easily betray your trust. The two-faced individual not only strains individual relationships, but can also create a toxic environment around them. Their behavior fosters distrust, conflict, and insecurity among a group, whether it be in a workplace, a circle of friends, or within a family. Their actions are often driven by a desire for personal gain, be it power, influence, 
or mere amusement at causing disruption. Stoicism teaches us to focus on our own virtue and integrity and not to be swayed by the deceitful actions of others. Seneca advised to choose our company wisely, asserting that being alone is better than being in bad company. Stoicism also prompts us to reflect on our responses to betrayal. It's natural to feel hurt and angry when you discover someone's duplicity, but Stoics would counsel us to rise above these initial emotional reactions. They would urge us to respond with reason and dignity, maintaining our own ethical standards and not stooping to their level of deceit. In dealing with a two-faced individual, the most effective strategy is to distance yourself once their true nature is revealed. Reducing your emotional and personal investment in the relationship protects you from further harm. Moreover, it's important to cultivate relationships with people who value authenticity and transparency. Surround yourself with individuals who support and uplift you both in your presence and in your absence. Choosing to interact with genuine people aligns with the Stoic principle of living a life of virtue. It not only fosters a healthier emotional environment, but also enables you to grow and thrive, unaffected by the underhanded tactics of those who choose duplicity over integrity. Number 9. The Toxic Individual This person is often a complex blend of many negative traits, each more damaging than the last. They might exhibit behaviors like manipulation, constant negativity, jealousy, or dishonesty. Being around them can feel like being caught in a storm, where your positive outlook and inner peace are constantly under threat. Their presence in your life can lead to feelings of doubt, insecurity, and even fear, as they seem to have a knack for souring what should be joyful experiences and turning strengths into perceived weaknesses. Dealing with a toxic individual is challenging because their influence can seep into various aspects of your life, clouding your judgment and affecting your interactions with others. They often create an environment where you're always on the defensive, always having to shield yourself from their next negative outburst or manipulative tactic. This can be exhausting and deeply unsettling, challenging your mental and emotional stability Epictetus offers wisdom that is particularly applicable when dealing with toxic people. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. This guidance encourages us to focus on our responses rather than trying to change the toxic individual. It reminds us that our power lies in our reactions, our decisions, and our ability to maintain self-control in the face of adversity. Implementing this stoic approach involves setting firm boundaries with the toxic person, clearly define what is not acceptable in their behavior towards you, and be consistent in enforcing these limits. It's crucial to protect your space and peace of mind. If the toxic behavior continues despite your efforts, it may be necessary to distance yourself entirely from the individual. While this can be a difficult decision, Especially if the toxic person is a close friend or family member, it's sometimes the healthiest choice you can make. Surround yourself with people who uplift you and encourage your growth. Cultivate relationships that bring positivity, mutual respect, and genuine support. By doing so, you reinforce your resilience against toxicity and foster an environment where you can thrive. Remember, in dealing with a toxic individual, the goal isn't just to avoid their negative impact, it's to ensure that your life continues to be driven by your values, aspirations, and the pursuit of genuine happiness. You have the strength and the right to choose an environment and relationships that support your well-being and allow you to live your best life. And there you have it, a guide through the tricky terrains of human interactions. Remember, your peace of mind is precious, and whom you choose to trust plays a crucial role in preserving it. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of self-awareness and growth at Stoic Journal. Don't forget to watch our next video, appearing right on your screen, 
to continue enriching your life with Stoic wisdom. Thank you for being part of our community. Until next time, stay wise and stay serene.